Bienvenidos, worldwide fans of the planet. It's hottest entertainment with an edge. I'm Ian Fuego, and I welcome you to my namesake program in Fuego Tainment. Another Rapido Fuego review, and this is one for something that is surprisingly hitting theaters this weekend, and probably not with the extent of fanfare that I think it would receive if we were not in the midst of a pandemic. So this is all about Let Him Go, which stars Leslie Manville, Diane Lane, and Kevin Costner. And I gotta say, this entry from Focus Features that I got to see a uh, virtual advance of just last night uh, hits theaters tomorrow, which is uh, November 6th. I was really impressed. Now, granted, this is not the sort of film that's gonna be for everybody. It's almost two hours. It's very just slow moving, somber, but beautifully shot, incredibly acted with some just very nerve-wrackingly tense scenes. And so, just to give you a little bit of context here, um, Costner, once again, I mean, I know everybody's watching him on Yellowstone right now, my dude Stephen King included. Um, he's doing like kind of that rancher, uh, former sheriff sort of thing in this. And uh, yeah, so kind of sticking along the lines. I know on the, I don't think on the Yellowstone show he's a sheriff. He's just like, you know, this big prominent rancher and stuff. And so, yeah, the film basically begins with him, his son, his daughter-in-law, his wife obviously, played by Diane Lane, which is kind of a interesting pairing once again, because that's Pop and Mama Cat from Man of Steel. But uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, the grandparents, um, you know, the parents obviously, and then the grandson, and tragedy strikes right at the beginning of the movie when uh, the son falls off, breaks his neck, dies while riding a horse. Very tragic, very sad, and the daughter-in-law remarries, and turns out she remarries a big old piece of crap, man. I mean, abusive, hitting both her and the young child who's only a few years old at this particular point. Diane Lane, while playing like little uh, Angela Lansbury in this, you know, Murder, She Wrote sort of shit. Um, yeah, she observes this transpiring and then doesn't mention it to Costner right away, her husband, and yet she does once uh, the daughter-in-law and the grandchild, and well, former daughter-in-law, obviously, and the new husband all just suddenly disappear. So then begins the investigation of where did they go, what exactly happened, and it's following the trail through the Dakotas, because that's where this takes place, although they did film it in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, but, you know, similar area of, uh, the, you know, just uh, our neighbors to the north and stuff, and beautiful countryside. As I said uh, just a moment ago, this film is spectacularly shot, and, uh, yeah, it's uh, just... It takes a little while to get going, you know, just them being the sleuths and, you know, following the breadcrumb trail and stuff like that. But once we actually find the, the former family members and stuff and we see what is going on with the new husband's family and what they're all about, the tension just builds and builds and builds. And so, uh, yeah, they have this... Leslie Manville plays uh, Blanche, who is basically the matriarch of this uh, of this property and this family. So she's presiding over a bunch of like vicious sons, and uh, yeah, it's um, it just starts to get ugly pretty quickly once we hit the second act, without really going into any extensive specifics and stuff. But Costner plays it in a very somber fashion, you know, as I, just to double down on that. But he's very he's very stoic, very composed, whereas. Diane Lane, you know, she's a rough and tumble like ranch kind of girl, and she's the one leading the charge more so than even her husband. He's the one trying to calm her down, second guessing to a degree, if going at it with this family and trying to get, you know, former daughter-in-law and grandson out of this abusive relationship with the fearsomeness that we start to quickly realize is the case with this new family she's married into is the best idea. Costner is very hesitant and reluctant. He's a retired sheriff, spent 30 years on the force. She takes his gun without even telling him when they're starting off on the journey. I mean, it takes a while for him to kind of get out of his shell and realize that this is the course of action that's necessary. But I gotta tell you, there is, she plays it so very well, but there is an overly impetuousness to Diane Lane's character's just motivations within this. And it's more so than anything because of the fact that she lost her son and she can't let her son go, hence the title. And so in turn, 
she wants you know them to let her grandson go because it's really the only connection to her dead son that she has left and so for that reason she definitely acts a little impetuously she acts irrationally and there is some collateral damage in certain parts of the film without spoiling stuff so her character did rub me the wrong way from time to time as far as her i mean mothers when it comes to their children and grandchildren and i i know the same as with fathers obviously but it's a little bit different with with mothers and grandmothers i would imagine and so yeah she she goes beyond the point of reason sometimes because she's so certain that the cause is righteous and while it is maybe things aren't went about in the best possible fashion from time to time in this film and it's there are a couple scenes in particular one is a dinner scene where i could just just cut just the the energy of the tensity, you know, with a butter knife, man, because of the fact that it was just, I mean, it's just oozing with, like, what is gonna happen here? What, how bad is this conflict gonna escalate? And then there's a couple other scenes once we segue into the third act and stuff. And so I was really impressed with Let Him Go. It's unfortunate because this is a film that, once again, I think would really get some, uh, I mean, some awards nomination consideration based on the performances, Diane Lane especially, um, and Leslie Manville especially, because she is, she's crazy to a degree and very impressive with her acting as the, as the matriarch who goes like head to head with Diane Lane's grandmother character. And I was just, I was in awe of how scary and fearsome this woman was. And you know, she is scarier than her sons that she kind of sicks on this, these grandparents that are trying to, you know, rescue their former daughter-in-law and their grandson. And so, and the third act, while I had some issues with a few of the scripting decisions, there are a few moments that are incredibly satisfying. One entails a shotgun without spoiling anything specifically. So yeah, guys, I'm actually, I'm gonna give this four out of five Fuego Fireballs. This is a certified Fuego film. I was really impressed with it. Didn't really go in expecting too much, although I do like westerns, although this isn't like a full-on western. It's, I guess you would call it like a neo-western because it's you know, one of those like new westerns because it takes place very evidently in like sometime in the mid to late 50s, I would imagine, because of the cars and the clothing and the technology or lack thereof and all that stuff. But man, there are some scenes that legit had me on the edge of my seat. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that this finds a proper audience once it is on home VOD or you know DVD, Blu-ray, whatever sort of release for more people to check it out. So I've been having in Fuego. Y'all can find me on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on the YouTubes. Um, most recently, I've done reviews of the Borat uh, subsequent movie film, uh, On the Rocks, the new Sofia Coppola, a few other things, Antebellum the other day that just finally saw a proper home release. So uh, a like, a share, a subscribe here means a hell of a lot, everybody. If you like spectacular stuff, and there are, as I said, some very scary moments in this film specifically, but if you want to go full on horror, you got to go to youtube.com slash the horror show channel, just like you see below. That's my main YouTube channel with this being my, my little side venture, but I still put all of the passion into both of those destinations. Uh, yeah, over on that channel though, we do one episode every single day, whereas here I do a few a week. Um, yeah, the horror show, trailer reactions, reviews of anything, uh, scarific under the sun. So support over there is also appreciated. And that's going to be the end of the proceedings for today, y'all. So until the real of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, San amigos, constant readers, and in this case, viewers alike, say thank you for a little bit of your time today. But I'm hopeful we share more of this film palaver sooner rather than later. And until then, if you're willing, brave the theaters for this one, because I was really impressed with Let Him Go.